Are you ready to hear a man of God sharing from his heart? All right, let's welcome right, Rob. Hallelujah. You can hear me? All right. I went through a few changes since I've been here last. I was here when? In March. And uh, uh, one of the changes uh, was with the way I see. Ah, it's a prophetic thing. I'm prophesying to you now, right? It's how I see, looking through a new set of optics. Uh, let's see, we had an uh, event in February, I believe it was February, and uh, the Pinkstons, were, where, where did they go? Were, were they here? In, were you with us in February at the Women of God Arise? In, in August at the Come and See gathering. Okay, well, we were with Patricia and um, Patricia King and uh, Kim Hathaway and, and a couple of other people in February, and uh, I got my second diamond, my second diamond. Now, the first diamond that I ever got supernaturally was in Phoenix. I was at a supernatural conference, and uh, how many of you have ever heard of David Hogan? And uh, I was watching David Hogan, and uh, I just had the privilege of being assigned to him as a sentinel. And uh, I'll never forget it, because if, you, if you've ever been around him, I mean, he's a character. He really is. And, and I just watched him that night, and, and, and he just kept going, you know. And he just had this glazed look in his eye, you know, like he was on a, on a mission, you know. And I, I remember watching him, and I said... Uh, I said, excuse me, Mr. Hogan, I said, what in the world are you doing, you know? I'm not afraid to ask, right? You have not because you ask not, right? So, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, brother, what are you doing? And he says, uh, there's diamonds in the room, boy. <laughs> you just got to know, David, that's how he talks. And, uh, and I said, oh, Okay. And so uh, as I stood there for a few minutes, and it didn't take long, I found myself going. <laughs> and every sparkly thing that I saw on the carpet, man, I was checking out. You know, I was out of position. He was no longer on my mind. I'm thinking, man, there's diamonds in the room. And so I'm looking and, uh, you know, never, never really saw one. Uh, but I sat down behind uh, Mr. Hogan, and, and uh, we, we had a prayer time after everybody was seated. And, and I sat down, and I'm telling you exactly how it happened, but I sat down, and I, and I was looking down like this, and I saw some sparkly blue, what appeared to be like dust. That's the only way I can explain it. It just looked like dust. And... Um, I took my hand and, and I rubbed my hands back and forth because I wanted to see if it was real. I didn't know if I was looking through the spirit or if I was looking in the natural. So I put my hand in it and started rubbing it like this and a diamond pops out. Lady sitting next to me saw the whole thing happen and she was just as shocked and freaked out as I was. I was just going, oh my gosh. You know, she goes, oh my gosh, there's a diamond, you know, go God, go. And I was like, whoa. You know, and I said, excuse me, Mr. Hogan. I said, uh, I said, is this what, uh, what you've been saying? Yeah, that's a diamond right there, boy. <laughs> I said, man, this is amazing. But I had this thought. Now, I'm going to prophesy to you now. You ready? Yeah. And I had this thought because I've been around other individuals who have received gemstones supernaturally. Gemstones. I mean, rocks. Okay. This diamond was tiny, itty, bitty, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. And I'll never forget looking at it, and, uh, and that was one of the first things that just came up in my mind, and I thought, you know, he's so tiny. <laughs> you know? And all of a sudden, I just heard the Holy Ghost. Say, don't you dare despise small beginnings. <laughs> and man, I shut up real fast after that. I, I thought, oh, holy is the Lamb of God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just cherished that diamond. And then it's not even so much uh, the diamond that, uh, um, 
is fascinating. You know, anything supernatural is, is awesome. But somebody say purpose. See, there's purpose in the realm of the supernatural. And uh, it wasn't so much uh, the miracle as much as what the miracle was speaking. It's symbolic. Somebody say symbolic. And so I'm looking at this diamond, and, and the diamond represents prophetically clarity. It, it refers to vision. Yeah, yeah. And so the Lord was saying, Rodney, uh, you're about to see a little clearer now. Yeah, I'm about to reveal something more to you now. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. And then our ministry went into a shift from that moment on. As a matter of fact, it went into about a two-year shift, I think, something like that. And I've got it documented just season after season of, of just the various transitions that we went through and, and just were just amazed. And then in February 15th of this year, we got our second diamond. And this one was a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, this one was a little bigger. I'm telling you, when you're faithful with a little, you can be entrusted with more. God loves us too much to keep us the way we are. It's not even to say that it's bad. All things work together for good. Amen? And so uh, little did I know that I was actually literally going to look through new optics. Clarity. And so uh, we went into another phase, uh, February 15th, and we're still in that uh, phase. And it's good. Somebody say it's good. good. So one of the changes that I've had is uh, I got some eyewear, and uh, I've had people say, well, what took you so long? I'm 45, and I went as long as I possibly could, so this is where I'm at. But I am seeing a little bit more clearly now. The second thing that I had done was, uh, how many's ever heard of Randy Domain? Yeah. We were, uh, we've had the privilege of being with Randy twice this year. And the first time that we were with him was right after we left here. Yep. Went back to Amarillo and had him in Amarillo. And uh, it was interesting, just loved him right from the beginning. Uh, one of the first times that I'd ever really sat down with him, got to know him a little bit. And he had braces. Yeah, and, uh, and I just thought it was kind of cool, and I was just kind of messing with him, and I said, ah, the Lord's making the crooked places straight. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good stuff right there. And not even a month later, I got braces. Oh, yeah, you got to watch what you decree because the Lord says I'll establish it. Amen? So I'm grateful for it, though, because he's making the crooked places straight. So I just seen him again down at the tent meeting, and uh, we were talking about the, the braces, and, and he says, yeah, you know, the Lord began to talk to me about uh, that comment that you made about making the crooked places straight. And he actually took it into a, a depth um, that, that went even beyond that, and it was a changing of the guard that he was stepping into a new place, uh, but yet I was stepping into a new place. And he made reference into his mandate as a mandate to make the crooked places straight. And that was the season that he was in when he got his braces put on. And so it was almost like the Lord was saying, listen, Rodney, I'm bringing you into a time now where we're going to begin to see literally crooked places made straight. I think that's pretty awesome, don't you? Real prophets, what's on them will come on the people. Oh, yeah. You become who you hang around. Woo! So get ready, somebody. God loves us too much to keep us the way we are. Amen? So I got some new optics, got some new braces, and I'm just ready to go. I am going to attempt to do the best I can after 
11 hours of traveling, and uh, it's just as cold here as it is in Texas. It's cold. But I want to attempt to talk about where we've been and where we're going. And in order to know where you're going, sometimes you have to look back where you've been. And we're in a seasonal shift right now. Somebody say a seasonal shift. shift. Now, I'm going to prophesy to you tonight. That's the mantle I carry, so that's the package you're going to get. Uh, Even when I'm not prophesying, I'm prophesying. But uh, we're in a seasonal shift. We're stepping into a new season. And I want to touch on that just for a moment because um, how many believe that God has a calendar? It says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that to everything there is a uh, There's scripture that talks about that I'll do uh, signs in the heavens, wonders on the earth. Um, God is a God of detail, and he's a God of order. And what I begin to learn is that when you synchronize yourself uh, with the purposes of God, then you begin to align heaven and earth. That's pretty good stuff right there. And so uh, I want to touch on that just for a little bit because we're in a seasonal shift and uh, there's four seasons. Somebody say four seasons. Four seasons. And they come in three-month increments. Uh, We call them quarterly. Three-month increments is recognized as a season. And we are stepping into our final stretch in our season, and then we'll step into uh, March, and March uh, uh, initiates uh, a beginning. Somebody say a beginning. When Jesus rose from the dead, it initiated a new beginning. And so uh, we want to finish strong. You want to finish strong. And uh, when I was in Denver today, and see, it comes on me when I'm, when I'm mentioning it. That's why I know it's the Lord. I'm sitting in Denver uh, today, and I just had this overwhelming sensation uh, of the Spirit of the Lord. He just came upon me, and I, and I heard these words, no man left behind. You know, and I just want to throw that out there because um, oftentimes the Word of the Lord comes and, and it'll just come as a thought sometimes. And I'll just grab it. And uh, does that mean anything to anybody? Can I just throw that out there? Uh, no man left behind. And, and what I sensed that the Lord was telling me was, Rodney, I, there's people that are still in the last season. I want you to pull them out of that season and bring them into the current season that we're in right now. That's pretty good stuff right there, amen? And so what I want to do is kind of bring out a biblical perspective the best way that I can. And I talked to the leadership here when I was here back in March in this particular area, uh, but it's worth repeating on a corporate level because uh, to everything there is a season. And if we can capture the simplicity of the reality of season, Um, we can go through transitions a little easier than where we've been in the area of transition. Not everybody likes transition. Mainly because people fear what they don't know. See, transition will cost you something. It's called faith. 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 He wants to activate faith. I heard a latest statistic a while back that said something about uh, 80% of Christians, 80% of Christians are in curiosity and hope. Now, that's a deep statistic. Curiosity and hope. Now, curiosity and hope isn't going to bring a bride without spot or wrinkle. Ah, glorious bride's going to walk in faith. Confidence. Strength. Confidence. I like that, don't you? 
strength and confidence, a people that know who they are and where they're going. They mean what they say and they say what they mean. Woo! You like that? <laughs> and so uh, I want to look at something very quickly in Habakkuk chapter 2. Look at Habakkuk chapter 2. And then I want you to turn to 1 Kings 19. Habakkuk chapter 2, and then 1 Kings 19. Habakkuk 2, beginning in verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Watch this. But at the end, it will speak, and it will not lie. Oh, that's powerful stuff right there. I want to talk to you just for a moment on the reality of the rhema spoken word. The word is not just logos written. The word is also spoken. It's alive. It says in Hebrews 4 that the word of God is alive and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it severs that which is flesh and spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit and life. Something happens when creator touches his creation. (laughs) The Bible says crazy stuff like deep calls out to deep. In order for deep to cry out to deep, there has to be a deep to respond. It's, it's craving. In order for you to crave something, there has to be something to answer that crave. You can't crave chocolate if chocolate didn't exist. There's something in you and I that craves the things of the Lord. There is a deep calling out to deep, but curiosity and hope isn't going to eat it. Now we're going to have to push you a little bit. So I'm going to push you. Somebody. Let's just push each other, amen? So to everything there is a season, and the first season that I want to point out that you and I step into, and this is a never-ending cycle. Somebody say a never-ending cycle. This will be all of the days of your life. You will step into a season of vision. The word of the Lord will come and awaken the inner man. When he awakens the inner man, he refers to this as a wheel, or let's call it this, the cycle of blessing. The cycle of blessing is as a wheel. It means circle. It's where the beginning touches the end and the end touches the beginning. It's a cycle. And what I love about God is that if we don't get it this year, he loves us so much and his mercy is so profound, he'll give us another chance next year. I want it this year. (laughs) Gifts are free, but maturity is expensive. There is a... I hear the whistle blowing. (laughs) Did you know that there was scripture that actually says that he whistles? That's good stuff right there. 
I pay attention to little things like that. I really do because I really believe that God is always speaking. It just comes down to how many ways can we get acquainted with hearing him. To everything, there's a what? What's the first season? Vision. Are you with me? Turn over to Kings. Did I tell you 1 Kings 19? I told you right. Look at this in 1 Kings 19. Uh, The Lord spoke to Elijah and said, I want you to go find Elisha, and I want you to anoint him as king in your place. Verse 19, so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Saphat, who was plowing with the 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12. Then Elisha passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Somebody say, he cast the vision. He found him. And the word of the Lord was anoint him in your place. And so he threw his mantle over him, or he cast the vision over him, saying, listen, there is no plan B, you're it. That's how powerful the prophetic spoken word of God is. He's not a man that he should lie. So he releases something so profound that it thrusts you into a place of hope and curiosity. It's bigger than that. My thoughts aren't your thoughts. I love you too much to keep you the way you are, but I'm going to give you a word so that you can get a vision because without a vision, you die. You're not going to die. You're going to live. If you can see it, you can have it. Faith without is, uh uh-oh, so you're going to have to get active. Somebody say the wheel. A wheel rolls. So every time the Lord releases a rhema spoken word, a prophetic creative word, get ready to move. That's the reality of it. Some people just want to walk around in the vision state and just talk about it. (laughs) Woo! I'm called to cast out devils, raise the dead, heal the sick. Woo! (laughs) Well, that's kind of (laughs) cool. I'm going to rejoice with that. But it's not enough to just talk about it. How long do you want to talk about it? How long? He's very patient. We read in the Bible that some never even made it. That's why you can't hang around doubt and unbelief. You can't hang around murmurers, mumblers, and complainers. You know why? Because you become who you hang around. You know what you'll start doing when you hang around these type of individuals? You'll be talking about how bad the leadership is and how much better you can be and where this is happening and where that isn't happening and where you should be happening and... Say, we're going somewhere. And so when the Lord releases a word, this is is how profound it is. And I want you to think about this just for a moment. If the word of God is alive and powerful, 
It's creative in nature. If he says light be and it was. So he speaks into the atmosphere. He decrees a thing. When he decrees a thing, it goes into the atmosphere and the Bible says it's alive. The spoken word of God, the moment it's loosed from your mouth, it's alive and it's on assignment. It's on assignment. It's on assignment. It has purpose. Because the Bible says that God's word doesn't return unto him. I like the one translation that says fruitless. So it will remain until it becomes fruitful. How many words, creative spoken words, have been loosed into this region? And they're just brooding. They're just brooding. They're alive. They're just as real as you and I standing and sitting in this room. But it takes something from them to get out of the atmosphere. In order for it to get out of the atmosphere, it has to find something called faith. A mustard seed. Somebody say a mustard seed. It's just like the diamond, the first diamond that I got supernaturally. Have you ever seen the size of a mustard seed? It's tiny, man. Tiny, tiny. So he's saying, that's all I'm asking is a mustard seed. So the word of the Lord that you have brooding over your life right now, it's looking for a place to land. You have to be crazy enough to believe it. And the only way you can believe it is by faith. Otherwise, it'll remain in the vision state and you'll talk about it for years and centuries. I'll see you again in five years and you'll still be doing the same thing. It's like, what happened? There's got to be breakthrough. We can't stay in the season of just talking about it. We got to move. This is good stuff. Listen, listen, I did some research on the desert. Isn't this the type of terrain that we live in here? This is the desert, and did you know that I discovered that the desert uh, oftentimes in Scripture is uh, attached to revelation and power? Revelation and power! Oh, shatara la bosta. I feel like doing backflips because I'm thinking this is a congregation that is a breaker congregation for revelation and power. Right here. A people not just talking about it. Oh, man, I feel it. I feel the breaker right at the door. I feel him right at the door. Revelation and power, that's what the desert is associated with. It was Moses that had the encounter with the I am at the backside of the desert. Jesus, come out of the desert. Got angelic visitation. Moved in power. Shatara la bosta. Oh, man, I'm getting excited just talking about it. Because I like revelation and I like power. And there's no sense in asking him for either if you're not going to do anything with it. (laughs) 
So look at this. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Man, he cast vision over the boy. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Man, if this isn't a ridiculous symptom in the body of Christ, I don't know what is. Well, if I get the money first, well, then I'll do that. You're going to be waiting around this time next year. Faith doesn't operate like that. That's curiosity. Well, I wonder if it's going to happen. He's not a man that he should lie. He's already did his part. What are we doing in our part? I'm just crazy enough to believe it. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. And I love this. Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Now, look at this. He says something interesting here. He says, and he said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? This is interesting to me. He says, go back again, for what have I done to you? So he casts the vision over the kid, tells him, you're the guy. This is what the Lord has in store for you and I'm releasing the word over you. And the kid gets excited, says, i got to take care of a few things first. And he looks at him and says, what do I have to do with you? That's interesting. In other words, he was saying, listen, I did what I was supposed to do. I did my part and I loose the creative spoken word over you. From that moment on, watch this, because every season will always consist of accountability. Accountability. What happens from that moment on is in between you and God. So he says, listen, What do I have to do with it? I've already done my part. If you say yes to the vision, if you put your hand to the plow, the Bible says at the end of the verse that he served the vision. He served the vision. You're going to have to serve the vision. So what is the word that has been spoken over your life and to what extent are you serving it? To what extent are you serving it? Are you even serving it at all? Are you even serving it at all? Or are you still in the place where you're just kind of talking about it, meditating on it? I, I I see some of your thoughts. Well, what about timing? And I oh come on, man. It's been too long. That's the timing. <laughs> well, what if I fail? You gotta realize all things work together for good. All things work together for good. Even when it looked like it went wrong, it was good. Why? Because I learned something in experience. Experience will always bypass knowledge. Oh, once I experience it, you won't take that from me. I own it. I own it. So what we're really talking about is you don't move because of fear. That's what we're really dealing with, failure. Oh, man, failure. Nobody wants to fail. 
But is it really failure? Let me move on. Are you with me so far? So it says at the end of the verse, watch this, then he arose and followed Elijah and he became his servant, or let's just say he served the vision. And now go to 2 Kings. Let's begin in, let's pick up in verse 2 Kings chapter 2 in verse 1. Let's look at this. 2 Kings chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elijah, watch this, from Gilgal. Somebody say Gilgal. Gilgal Gilgal actually means wheel. It means circle. It means rolling. Now look at this because he says, that Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgal. So he's moving out of the vision state or out of the vision season, and he's stepping into a new season. It's a time of transition. I love this because this is never going to change, ever. When the Lord gives you vision, And you have to have it. Why? Because it's appointed. We read that in Habakkuk. It's for an appointed time. And even though it tarries, uh uh-oh, be patient. Wait for it. Because you might have to learn a few things on the way. See, we don't want to just touch a move of God. We want to sustain a move of God. We don't need another revival. We need a reformation. We're in desperate times now. We're in desperate times now. It's going to take something more than an outpouring. We need a people that say what they mean and mean what they say. We need a people that are full of revelation and power. And so he causes people to move to the appointed territory for such a time as this to release a prophetic, creative, spoken word. That this is more than just winner. Well, let's go out and hear Rodney. There's nothing else to do in the... (laughs) See what he's got to say. I mean, we'd just be sitting at home watching The Voice anyway and... It's true, isn't it, Pinkstons? In Alaska, they actually love meetings in the winter because that's why people come out. They actually do something, don't they? It's true. Oh. But what you don't know is that I really felt in my heart that the Lord wanted me here before the end of the year. I really believe that with all of my heart. And now I'm beginning to see. See, oftentimes you don't even know until you get there. That's right. There it is. You don't even know until you get there. And they're all sending me emails and they're wondering, am I messing the whole camera thing up? Am I zooming in and zooming out? I'm animated and I'm sorry. I, I can't just hang out in one area. I, I got spiritual ADD. <laughs> I mean, I, it's going to be hard to keep this one down. Huh? Listen, you're headed in the right direction. Make no mistake about it. You're in the right place for the right time. But to everything, there is a season, and that season will always begin with vision because it says that the words that I speak are spirit and life. It's the deep calling out to deep. It's the word of creator coming into man and pulling out his creation. Paul said, I long to be with you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift. He wasn't saying, oh man, I just long to be with you because your barbecue was good. 
I just long to be with you because you like had pralines that were roasted that were out of this world. You know, I just long to be with you. That's not, a, you know, they're the best givers in the world. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, I can't, if I can just get there, I'm confident that Creator is going to touch creation. It's going to provoke a response because what comes on the prophet comes on the people. But it takes a mustard seed. This thing needs a place to land. It's got a landing strip, and you're it. <laughs> Woo! Texas. Oh. Somebody say vision. Let's get it out of the vision state. You ready? Verse 2, and then Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, please. What's he doing? He's making him accountable. There's a seasonal shift. How many believe that if you listen to the prophets, I got one, yeah. (laughs) Maybe some of you want to look at the horoscope and see what it's got to say about you today. Oh, man, there's prophets in the earth today. He says, I do nothing in the earth without first revealing to my holy servants the prophets. Oh, it's a protocol. It's an order. Somebody say an order. Prophets capture the word of the Lord, and they go, oh, if I can just get there. Oh, I'm going to lose it. And that's the satisfaction that they find. I, I just feel what the Lord has in this region. I feel it. I, I stepped into it in Denver. <laughs> this is it. You guys are getting me all stirred up. You know, and Angela hit it, I feel faith in the room. Oh, you're going to get it. Watch this. So he makes him accountable. You've got to make yourself accountable. Listen, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And when the word of the Lord comes and says, listen, we're in a seasonal shift, then guess what? The wheel has to start to roll. It has to start to roll. So we get out of the vision state, and then it says that we go, look at verse 3. Or I'm sorry, at the end of verse 2. I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. So they went down to Bethel. Bethel means house of God. Oh. 1 Corinthians 6.19, do you not know that you that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary? 1 Corinthians 6.19, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? So to get out of the vision state, and to move into the next season, it's going to consist of the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. Lest the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. He loves us too much to keep us the way we are. So now it's called commitment. In order to go from one season into the other season, it's going to cost you something. Somebody say commitment. Commitment. Oh, this is the next season. Commitment. Oh, I love this because commitment is an opportunity to step under the canopy of grace. 
the canopy of grace. Oh, man. I'm trying to figure out how to word this, and I'm being real cautious. Because the canopy of grace enables us to step into commitment with his strength and his ability. And it isn't until you step out of that canopy of grace that you'll step into your strength and your ability. And this is where you get burnout. This is where, let me tell you how to recognize it. You went from I want to to I have. Demand has a way of creating hope deferred and making my heart sick. Demand. God never requires what you can't do. What can you do? What can you do? Because the wheel has to move in order for us to get it out of the supernatural dimension. We need a manifestation of heaven on the earth. We need the natural dimension penetrated with the realm of the supernatural. So I need to get it out of the supernatural and into the natural, and you're going to be the catalyst for it. You're going to be the conduit for it. It's not I that live, it's Christ that lives in me. He said, out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Rivers. He's in me like a river, not a lake. Man, this is good stuff. I know it very well. And it took me years to learn it. And finally I went, wait a minute. There's some sort of cycle going on here. Why is it these months and these months and these months, it's woohoo! And then these months and these months and these months, it's ho ho ho. Ho. You know, you know these ones. I mean, it's like the plague. You don't even want to get around him because you think that's going to get on you. There's some people you won't even go and talk to for that fact. It's true. You just know they're always in the warfare season. You know, they're always doing something with the devil. Why does it always have to be the devil when all things work together for good? See, the devil was defeated. I'm getting ahead of myself. Somebody say commitment. And this is the question you need to ask yourself tonight because some of you, he's going to redeem time. Man, I feel it. There it is. Some of you, he's going to redeem time. And the way he's going to do that is he's going to bring you back to that place where he said, listen, this is what I want. And you analyzed it, and and you jumped into the pool of presumption. See, presumption hears God and then does it the way they think it needs to be. (laughs) Come on. How many has ever done it? I know I have. God speaks, and I go, woo, I got this. And the next thing you know, I'm falling into the pool of depression. Somehow I pictured this a little differently in my mind. I went from woo-hoo to hoo. Come on, somebody. 
what we fail to realize in the season of commitment is patience. Patience. You have to allow patience to have its perfect work. Perfect work. And all of the world opposes patience. You are confronted with fast everything. Now, 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 now. It's not so in the kingdom. But you know something else that I actually discovered? He'll actually give it to you knowing you weren't ready for it. That'll mess with some of you. It's true. He will give it to you. Think of the story of Luke 15 with the prodigal son. Give me my inheritance. Okay. Isn't that profound? Just gave it to him. Knowing he was going to screw it up. But he learned something. Oh, he learned something. He learned something that he wasn't going to get through the hearing of the ear. He had to experience transition. All things work together for good. All things work together. I keep quoting that verse. I might as well give it to you. It's Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Somebody say there's purpose in the madness. Aren't you glad? Somebody say commitment. So the first thing is what? Vision. The second thing is what? And with some of you tonight, he's going to redeem the time. He's actually going to take you back to that place because there was a lot of presumption that caused hope deferred and made the heart sick. We're going to step out of presumption and into freedom tonight. We're going to step into liberty tonight. And we're going to go, okay, God, this is what you said. And I don't move. Oh, off of that because that's where my canopy of grace is. That's where his strength is. Supernatural strength. That's where his divine grace is for your life. His strength, his ability. That's power. The Bible says crazy stuff in Job 28. It says, I will cause the rock to pour out rivers of oil for you and bathe your path like cream. Don't don't make me break the... Don't, don't, I'll do it. Huh? Huh? Hey! I will just glide all the way through it. He'll cause the rock to pour out rivers of oil for you and bathe your path like cream. That's not to say that opposition isn't going to come. That's just to say that butter makes it better. (laughs) Come on, man. If you're anything like Texas, butter makes it better, man. I don't care what it is. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get out of this state. Vision and commitment. Are you ready? And this is where we're going to park and go into an impartation because I feel like this is some of the season that you're currently in right now and some of you haven't got out of it. Are you ready? Verse 3. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 3. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you, uh, from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Just a side note, and I'm sorry that I take rabbit trails sometimes. But as a side note, there's always voices in the midst of transition. 
Gifts are free, but maturity is expensive. Maturity says, yes, I know. Shut up. Shutty. See, that's the renewing of your mind. Why are you cast down on my soul? The soul wants to rob you from walking in the Spirit. Because if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the... Yes, I know. Keep silent. Oh, shut that a la bosta. Look at verse 4. Then Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, please. What's that? Accountability. Love this. If you're a leader in this room, and I believe all of you are, you know what will keep you liberated in relationships is making people accountable. If the Lord said it, it's going to be fruitful and multiply. If he didn't, it's going to die. Keep people accountable. Let time take its course. That's good stuff right there. Because for whatever reason, if you don't decide, if you, let's say you fell into presumption, then because you're in presumption, you'll come to me and say, ah, you didn't do it right, and now I'm, you're the blame. Hey, don't blame me, man. I just released the word. You become accountable to it now. I guarantee you, you are in one of these seasons right now. You're either getting vision or you're getting in a realm of commitment or you're in this third realm. Are you ready? All right, no more rabbit trails. Say no more rabbit trails, Rodney. Look at verse 4. Then Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to, all right? Now, I want you to see this, Jericho. Somebody say Jericho. Jericho. Now, we know that Jericho represents warfare. And uh, how many have ever heard of Chuck Pierce? <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me something in uh, Denver, and I want to go ahead and release it because we may never get to it again. It says that your promises will be hidden in the midst of seasons of transition. Your promises will be hidden in the midst of seasons of transitions. Every transition will come with opposition and accountability. You know why? It's real simple. Because opposition causes your root system to go down deep. If there's no storm, then there's no opportunity, there's no reason for the roots to go down any deeper. And if the roots don't go down any deeper, then you will grow to a certain height and that's it. In order for you to grow stronger, in order for you to be more fruitful, in order for you to advance, your roots have to go down deeper to sustain the greatness. Some of y'all been rebuking the storms. That's why God ain't listening. No, it's true. That's why he ain't listening. It's like what he told Peter, get, get behind me. You don't even know what you're saying. Y'all believe the root system and the whole tree concept? It's been scientifically proven. They created a biodome. How many remember the 80s in the movie called Biodome? In the biodome, scientifically proven, Google it, biodome. Perfect conditions, perfect climate. Trees grew to a certain height and then literally fell over. And they discovered that there was no opposition. And when there was no opposition, the roots couldn't go down any deeper. And when the roots can't go down any deeper, then the tree goes to a certain height. 
and topples over. That's pretty profound. So opposition, good. I'm I'm catching some of you. Opposition, good. You don't know what's in you until you get squeezed. Are you with me? Since September, we started a new season. September, October. October, November. November, December. This will end one season, and it's thrusting us into another. So even though there's three months in the season, they all work together. So everything that's appointed for each month will correspond to some extent or another during that three-month period. It's line upon line, precept upon precept. Are you with me so far? So part of that season signifies eternal revelation. Watch this. Signifies eternal revelation and new beginning. I'm reading out of A Time to Advance by Chuck Pierce. How many believe Chuck's a prophet? It's been proven. He'll be at our church next month. I can't wait. We're the first church that he goes to in January. Uh, We actually start his schedule for the uh, upcoming year. This is a time for digesting what you have heard. It's a time for digesting what you have heard. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm just going to hit the highlights. Holy Spirit begins to emanate so a move of the Holy Spirit can begin. Now, if I'm the temple, where does he live? So where does he want to move? Sometimes he's moving, and we're just kind of hanging out. How much more beneficial would it be that when it's his season to move, it becomes your season to move, and the two become one? I think Jesus prayed like that, didn't he? Father, make them one as we are. Wow. Begin moving in new revelation. This is the month that you must war with words. Words that are not spoken correctly go into the inward parts of your stomach. Lots of stomach problems are the result of receiving wrong words. Jezebel give you a wrong word. We don't even have time to teach on that tonight. You should yell from you should yell from your inner being, I am satisfied. Why? Because all things work together for good. It's going to take a renewing of the mind. Somebody say, I'm satisfied. satisfied. Louder. Louder. This is a month of connecting your roots. You have to deal with root issues sooner or later. Somebody say cycles. As there's a cycle of blessing, there's also a cycle of cursing. There's some things that around this time every year we go through the same thing. God wants to break the cycle. He wants to shift you from the natural cycle into the supernatural cycle. Somebody say provision. So this is a key month to stand in your authority. This month is reserved for the anointing in which God pulls you aside, watch this, to draw a new anointing out of you. I love this. 
this can be an easy month or a hard month because he must press the anointing out of you. Cry out for the anointing to get pressed out of you. Revelation should be abounding in you this month that you flow in a supernatural dimension. Now, the reason that I read that was real simple because there was a word in there that was pretty consistent out of everything that's been appointed in these last three months, revelation. If there's one thing that terrorizes the enemy, it's you walking in revelation. The mysteries of Christ. (laughs) Revelation. Because revelation is authority. Just talking about authority, you're not a threat. When you commit to renewing your mind, then you become a little threatening. And that's why the third stage is Jericho. It's warfare. Now it's time to kill, steal, and destroy. Make no mistake about it. He wants you dead. Somebody say warfare. Warfare. If you don't know how to transition properly out of warfare, you will fall into a state of depression. Some of you are in that place now. Tonight is a night of breakthrough for you. Because what happens in transition is opposition. If you don't know how to stabilize yourself during times of opposition through the renewing of your mind, that's real maturity. If you don't, then you'll fall into the way of the circumstance, which is the way of the world, and they have pills for that. (laughs) They have pills for that. The world wants to give you a pill The Lord wants to give you an impartation. The Lord wants to give you a revelation. And in that revelation will come power to stabilize you. And so this time next year, you'll be founded on the rock. You'll be anchored in the rock. And I can go through that transition a little bit easier, like butter. That's funny stuff right there. All right. Now, I want you to turn back very quickly, and we're going to move into impartation, all right? Look at 1 Kings 19. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to give you the fourth season just so you know that I gave you four of them, all right? Promise. When they moved from Jericho, they went to Jordan. Jordan represents the promise. It's where the transition took place, where Elijah left And Elijah stepped in to the creative spoken word. There was a cycle. First, it was in a vision state. Then, it was in a serving, a commitment state. But then, it was in a warfare state. And then, it went into obtaining the promise state. It went from just talking about it to becoming it. You don't just want to talk about it. Every season in our life will consist of one of these four areas. You will either be in the vision state, the commitment state, the warfare state, or the promise state. And this is what I love about it, body. Are you ready for this? Is that if you're, you could be, see, we could be, in different places according to our measure of faith. So if you're in a, in a place where it's a warfare state and I'm in a place of promise, 
This is where real maturity comes in and iron sharpens iron. And this is where I become beneficial to my brother instead of him being the plague. Because we think it's going to get on us. And we don't want you around us because, man, I'm feeling too good right now. I mean, I got some financial breakthrough. I mean, there's promotion, and it's good. And then you're talking about what the devil's doing. Woo! Talk to the hand, man. (laughs) This ain't working for me. See, we've come on, somebody. That's my brother. That's my sister. That's real maturity. That's good stuff right there. So good, I lost my page. All right. I want to touch on warfare just for a moment. Ooh. Because we want to make the transition right. We want to finish strong. Somebody say strong. No man left behind. Man, I feel it every time I say it. A lot. (laughs) Shah. Yeah, make no mistake, friends. The impartation is actually starting to come into the room. It's actually starting to hover like smoke. (laughs) Haha. 1 Kings 19, beginning in verse 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Look at verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, And he went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. And when he saw it, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. What does Judah represent? One of the things that's established for this season right now is a new realm of creativity to be an expression from you and I in the realm of praise. I heard Michael say a minute ago in relation to Shabbat, did you know that in the book of Psalms, praise isn't even in there? You see the word praise, but you see it consistently. It's robbed us as Christians because every time you see the word praise, it's actually in one of seven characteristics. And what happens is when we come into a time of praise where it's consistent in one form, in one fashion, we miss out on the other characteristics. God may want a Shabbat. Ho! Let everything that has breath. And we're not giving him that. We're giving him, bring it in the sea. Bring it in the sea. Wonder if anybody's looking. Bring it in. Oh, man, we're getting robbed, man. So, listen, enter his courts. What else does it say? So, where does he go? To Judah. Where does he go? To Judah. I want you to see this in warfare. Because opposition will push you towards the Lord or keep you from him. Real maturity goes, "Uh uh-oh. If God be for me, who can be against me? Real maturity does that. Real maturity says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Sometimes your pastor isn't going to be there to pat you on the back and go, it gets better, brother. (laughs) 
Sometimes you're going to have to strengthen yourself. Sometimes where two or more gather, you and the Holy Ghost. That's real maturity. Somebody say the secret place. place. We won't be getting into that tonight. All right, so he runs to Judah. But what's interesting here, watch this. He's at the top of his game. He just slaughtered the 450 prophets at Baal. A supernatural sign and the wonder. One of the most profound signs and wonders takes place where the fire comes out of heaven, consumes the altar and even the water that was built in the ditch around it. And he's at the top of his game. You're always at the top of your game when you step into your promise. When you step into the manifestation of his goodness, you're always at the top of your game. But what we fail to realize is that the cycle starts all over again. And it's time for a new vision. He wants to build. Unless God builds the house, we labor. Well done, good and faithful servant. Because when you're faithful with a little, you can be entrusted with more. And you did it right, and I'm so proud of you. And so he releases another word. Opposition has its way of driving you to a place to listen. Oh, the devil so bad, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. But all things work together for the purpose. The devil, the devil, the devil. <laughs> no, it's God good, yes. devil bad. Right. <laughs> Watch this. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the where? And came and sat down under a broom tree. Watch this. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. It's interesting how many of us will keep prayer as the last resort. (laughs) It's like, oh, God, why didn't I think of that? could have prayed. Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on this earth. Just like it is in heaven. Give me something. He's saying, you got to give me something. I did it at the cross. You got to give me something. It's going to take faith. Somebody say faith. faith. That's why opposition. No opposition. You don't need no faith. Everything is woohoo and poopy loo. <laughs> no, need a little opposition. Why? Because faith without is without faith, it's in. And this is what I love about grace and mercy. Now faith is. That means regardless of what happened today or in the past. Now, faith is. That means right now I can lose some mustard seed, give this word a landing strip, and step right into where I'm supposed to be. And never missed a beat. Oh. Oh. Never missed a beat. That's glory. All right. I'm telling you, we're getting to the impartation. Just give me one more second. Listen, if I can do 11 hours of traveling, of course, I did have three shots of espresso. All right, verse 4, and, and, and then we're going to move into an impartation, I promise, because I want you to see this. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed, watch this, that he might die. And he says, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better. Than my fathers, and this is what was fascinating to me. 
somebody that's at the top of his game one moment and the next moment he's in a state of depression. Hope deferred has made the heart sick. Somebody say depression. I'm telling you, depression is a door of opportunity to step into a new season. And if you don't do it right, you'll step into the way of the world for it. And you won't step into the way of the kingdom. How do you know it's the world? You just want to die. Death. Remember what he comes to do? Kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill you. It's interesting that in this season that's appointed by God for transition, for fresh vision, the world sees it as a time of depression. Oh, it's big time. Big time. Big time. This is the season that people fall into depression. Now, I'm in the world, but I'm not. So I'm going to have to do it different. Somebody say different. different. And what happens is this will be a never-ending cycle if you don't break it. Somebody say accountability. accountability. But we're, fail- we're looking through wrong optics. I can see clearly now. Looking through the wrong set of optics. It's transition, but it's transition for something so profound that it's going to take you to get there to see what it is. And if the enemy can keep you from getting there, he's got you. Oh, man. And I'm telling you, there is a strength just to get you to the place of strength. And this is what happens to Elijah. An angel comes. Angel. Not Holy Ghost. Not Jesus. Not Abraham. Not Isaac. Not Jacob. Angel. Oh, man. The Bible says crazy stuff like angels encamp around those that fear the Lord. Angels are on assignment to the heirs of salvation. Oh, my gosh. He loves us so much. He, He won't even get involved with it because he knows it's transition. Here comes an angel, and an angel touches him. He what? Touched him. Don't miss Saturday. An angel came and touched him, wakes him up. Somebody say, new pair of shorts. why they're always saying fear not (laughs) oh god new pair of shorts listen an angel comes you know what there's there's so much in this, and, and, and I know it's, it's getting late, and it's a Thursday night. Let me just, there, there's so much. Maybe, maybe we can just pick up some more tomorrow. How about that? Yeah. Let, let's pick up some more tomorrow. But right now, I want you to stand.